buying the GPU you actually want, even in this late stage of 2021, is still quite difficult. But that's not stopping the talk of the RTX 4090 being upon us. But what can we actually expect? More performance? More power? Even a new connector? Let's do this. What are you watching? It's uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, right, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX. 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to 9 aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out of the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. Now, it wasn't that long ago when we saw the 30 series initially launch, with the flagship RTX 3090 being released in September of 2020. Since then, we've seen the full stack develop, all the way down to the RTX 3060. Now, with the latest and greatest Ampere architecture combined with tensor cores, ray tracing cores, and GDDR6X memory, at least for the 3070 Ti and above, it gave users amazing looking visuals in the latest titles at a variety of resolutions. I mean, it's safe to say that Nvidia are still pretty much owning the market, even with competition from Team Red and talks of Intel's new foray into the GPU world potentially coming as soon as January 2022 maybe even touted for a CES announcement. And just FYI, we will not be going to CES like we usually do. The um, situation in the world is just too messy for long distance travel. Now, back onto GPUs, and lately we've heard chatter regarding the RTX 3090 Ti. For those who are finding, you know, the 3090 just isn't enough. Now, what we potentially do know at this point is that there will be a few changes to grant it the Ti naming, or Ti naming structure. Firstly, with the current double-sided GDDR6X memory on the 3090 being switched to single-sided memory on the Ti, and a higher TDP moving from the 350 watts on the 3090 to potentially 400 to 450 watts. Now, obviously this can't just be done with a flick of a switch and instead is through the way of a new connector, very similar to the 12 pin connector that Nvidia used on their Founders Edition cards. But potentially with an extra set of pins below it and consequently being branded as PCI Express 5.0 power connectors. Now other potential connectors could be a single 16 pin connector, which I'm sure if it does go this way, there'd be some kind of form of adapters to take it back down to two eight pin connectors for backwards compatibility. Now, obviously when it comes to PCI Express 5.0, Intel are the only ones on the market right now who can harness the true potential of what it has to offer which at the moment, well, we're not even sure what that is. But as January looms ever closer, I'm sure that we're gonna end up finding out a lot, lot more. What is funny about PCI Express 5.0 is that ASUS have recently launched or at least announced their ROG Thor Platinum 2 ranges of power supplies in various different wattages. So we've got 850, 1000 watt and 1200 watt sizes, as well as a whopping 1600 watt titanium version. Now the odd part is that as part of their press release, they claim to be prepared for the future in talking about a new high capacity auxiliary connector packing 12 conductors into a single cable and conforming to PCI Express 5.0 standards. We are also excited about the announcement of PCI Gen 5 definition. All the new ROG Thor PSUs will be shipped with new Gen 5 12 pin connectors for the latest and the next generation GPUs. I have the 1000 watt unit here, and I also have the 12 pin cable that comes with it. And I mean, it looks suspiciously like the connector that's found on cards like this, the RTX 3070 Ti Founders Edition. And as per what we thought we knew, there's no extra four pins as, you know, the drawings and the renders would have you believe. And when pairing the cable and the connector together, well, they fit perfectly. So. I've got to ask, did Nvidia know something that the rest of us didn't and put this new connector on their cards over a year ago in a preemptive move to have the upper hand when it comes to extra power and PCI Express 5.0? But does this mean that potentially the 30 series cards could have more performance hidden and kind of locked away and they were just waiting for the key in both the PSUs needed to unlock the extra power and the PCI Express 5.0 standard that's 
given by pairing with Intel's latest 12th gen Alder Lake processors? Probably not. The more likely story is that ASUS have just got it wrong. And after reaching out to ASUS, we've not really been given any real statement on the matter, but we will keep pestering them for an ounce of clarification as this could be potentially huge news. What we do know though, is after reaching out to other industry colleagues who are, let's say, way more versed in power supply production than I am, we were told simply that this isn't PCI Express 5.0. This is not the connector. And it's just a full cable that incorporates Nvidia's 12 pin connector as found on the FE range of cards without the need for an extension. So basically it does the same job, but just looks a bit neater. I mean, when you look at the cables, even though it spans back to two eight pin connectors, there's actually only two sets of six physical pins inside. More due to the fact that the power supply itself, when you look at the connectors, uses eight pin blocks, basically making it easy for compatibility with their other included cables. So with the idea of the 30 series suddenly being unlocked with extra power, what can we look forward to past the 3090 Ti? Well, that's where the rumor mill with the RTX 4090 has come into play with a pretty bold move to combat kind of AMD's MCM manufactured graphics cards. We are talking the RX 7900 XT, including stack chiplets and cache, along with 3D Infinity cache that harnesses double the amount of RDNA 2. I mean, with moves like this, which saw AMD's RDNA 2 based GPUs bring the fight to Nvidia, at least in terms of pure rasterization performance, ray tracing aside, this latest chatter definitely would have got Nvidia a little worried. So how do they compete? Well, the upcoming architecture under the Ada Lovelace branded technology has found rumors talking of twice the amount of performance. But at what cost? Well, Twitter user Greymon55, who has actually been accurate a lot in the past, has sent out a pretty cryptic tweet of double the performance, double power consumption. Can you accept it? Now, normally a tweet like this could easily be dismissed as we'd simply expect a new generation to, yes, have more power, but with better efficiency. But with the 400 to 450 watt projection uh, TDP of the 3090 Ti, does seem to be slowly creeping up in terms of power draw, making this rumor seem more and more accurate. Couple this with the actual PCI Express 5.0 connector, and we could be looking at a mammoth 600 watt power draw, making it, as the tweet says, almost double the power consumption. Normally I take rumors like this with a pinch of salt, but being who, who this actual tweet is from and the talk of the new connector giving more headroom for power delivery, it's all kind of starting to align a bit too perfectly. Obviously, with increased power draw, you can potentially expect more heat too. So it's going to be interesting to see kind of what happens in terms of cooling and the designs that Team Green come up with and what they're going to be using for their founders. And more importantly, the reference spec design. But even with all this now, it's still likely to be at least six months off with potentially a big announcement at Computex 2022. And I mean, if that's the case, we'll be there getting all the information directly to you. Much like how you can get an eTechnics PC maintenance toolkit directly to you over on store.etechnics.com. With everything you need to build, repair, and maintain your PC, it's the only tool you'll ever need. With that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.